You know when you ask somebody, hey, what kind of music do you like? And then they say, oh, I, I like everything except for rap or country or whatever. That is a phrase I've heard so many times. It's bad to close your mind off to so many different types of genres, you know, or just listen to one stagnant thing your whole life. Truth is, people like weird. People like crazy things in music. But it's not like someone's put together like a song that has literally everything people hate in music into one... What's that? Oh. Oh. Well, let's talk about it. Enter Vitaly Komar and Alexander Ma Enter Vitaly Komar and Alexander Melamed, two artistic dingles that were born in Russia. They met at the Moscow Art Conservatory and they were known for being, well, let's say avant-garde. Their history is just extensive with controversial material. They're even denounced by the Soviet Union for the art that they created for not being conformist or whatever. They got a pair and they're a pair. They have a lot of experience in the world of creating things that can rub people in weird ways and they're kind of they, they have a sense of humor then in the 90s the duo started a series they called people's choice series not people's choice award but people's choice what they would do is they would take a survey and they would give it to a big group of people and they would fill out the things that they like and dislike about whatever the first thing they started with was art so you know they like landscapes and trees and uh, beautiful colors, you know, and they don't like hard lines and gar, 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 you know, like that kind of thing. And they would fill out all this stuff, and then from that, they would create a thing called the most wanted art and the most unwanted art. Well, so how did that one turn out? Oh, God! Why don't people like shapes? Once they created that and many eyes started bleeding, they decided to move on to instead causing bleeding from the ears. And they decided to do a series of the most unwanted music. This time they partnered up with a guy named David Soldier, who was a com who, who's a composer, but he's actually a professor of neuroscience. They got 400 people to do the survey, and they were off to create something beautiful? Well, first let's start with the most wanted song. The most wanted music. Uh, music that's about love, and it's... You know, three to five minutes long, it's like a, it's, you know, it's a pop song. They made a stereotypical R&B 90s pop song. And uh, the interesting thing with it, it's a duet between a girl that has, you know, a, a lady with an R&B type soul voice. And then the guy who sings has kind of a Bruce Springsteen like, ain't a man, uh, kind of rock voice styling. And it's just like, oh, this is what the people want? Well, that's... Yeah, and it has like saxophone, guitar, drums, whatever, you know, it's it's kind of a slow ballad -y kind of tempo, you know, easy, easy listening and really, really dull. Turns out when you do the things that are the safest when it comes to what people want, what everyone wants, it comes out, in lack of a better term, soulless. There's no soul. I have no soul. <laughs> It's very much just baseline, same volume, same thing, over and over, and it's boring. Yeah, the way I would describe the most wanted song is like an unseasoned chicken breast that's cooked. It's just white, plain, it's nourishing, I guess, but it's it's just, it's just not good. It's poopy, poopy, doo-doo. But no, you didn't come here for the most wanted song. You came here for the most unwanted song. You wanted something that was rough or brutal or uh, or something that's gonna make you feel upset, something to show your friends and they're gonna go, ooh, cringy. So I guess here we go. The most unwanted music. <laughs> this this piece is split up into 25 different movements. It blesses your ear holes, your ear holes with the sea of unwanted material that's just like forcibly smashed together like a ball of like ugh, like gushy play-doh and it's strangely enticing it's fascinating amid all this like cringe and ugh, there's a sincerity there's like heart to it because it's just so many things that you don't expect put together i know it's a parody but by putting all of these things that people don't like that are risky things to put into music it starts to become a little charming I don't, I don't know it's a weird way to describe it but it's true it becomes enjoyable what's really fun actually i actually have the original survey and it's fun to go through it and also listen to the song just to see like okay what did people vote on clearly right away you can hear tuba uh -oh, uh -oh. 
harp. You can hear bagpipes for sure. And a piccolo. Oh, you can totally hear accordion. And harmonica. Holiday Christmas. Politics. And cowboys, I mean, yeehaw, right away, yeehaw. <laughs> Bravo. I tried to show you little clips just to get a glance at it. If you want to watch the entire thing, I recommend it. Listen to it. Listen to it like eight times, because that's what I did. So, now that I've introduced you to the Most Unwanted song, I, I need to be completely honest. I kind of like it. There's something so enduring about taking so many risks, and it gives so much life to something. It just further proves the point that, like, if you take a risk, if you push the boundary on something, you'll be rewarded. You know, you might some people might like it, some people won't, but you know, at the very least, it's gonna garner some kind of attention. There's gonna be an opinion on it. There's always gonna be an opinion on this piece. And people are always gonna be coming back to the most unwanted song, just because it's so friggin' fascinating. I wouldn't say the same about the most wanted song. Because there is no risk. There's nothing in there. It's very milk toast, and that's also the same way, you know, you could say the same thing about life. If you don't take risks, if you just do the easiest possible route on everything, well, it's kind of dull. It's boring. It's passable. Why not try to push risks? Why not put an accordion in there? Why not make bagpipes into a thing? I think it's funny that the bagpipes sound kind of like Neutral Milk Hotel. <laughs> But the creativity with those awful choices, it limited what they could make. And it shines, you know? It's so, it's funny. <laughs> you can feel the heart in it. People love making things that are stupid. I'm making this video for Pete's sake. And so it's just, it's a fun thing to listen to. To some people could fall under the category, and I can kind of agree with it, uh, the category of so bad, it's good music. You know, same thing with like the Shags or Wesley Willis or whatever. If it brings some kind of emotional response, how can you deny the importance of it? Maybe that's why people like it so much. It sounds like somebody who's never made something before trying to make something and it's so fresh and unique. So with all of that being said, the most unwanted song is a fascinating listen. It's a fascinating video to watch if you wanna watch the score, which I recommend. Check it out down below. Check out the most unwanted song and get inspired by that and do something fun and new. All right, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe, comment, whatever, share it to people. More stuff's coming, more stuff is on its way. Um, I have my dog right here. Don't mind the clothing that was right there as well. She likes to snuggle with stuff. All right. Bye. Oh, bye. Bye. You still here? Wow. I just think it's funny that this video's length is not even half of the most unwanted song's entire length. Maybe I could just keep talking and make it half. Or I could poke my eyes out. Alright, I'll poke my eyes out.